that into practice. And I was reading the book of Esther today. So God bless you, everyone. Welcome to church, Friday Bible study. Let's open our hearts for him to, to do something new in our lives. Yesterday's gone. Today is all we have. Tomorrow doesn't belong to us. So let's be in anticipation as God ministers into our hearts. God never changes. I'm continually reminded that he's faithful, that he's good, that we see the evidence of God in our lives every single moment that we live. So we just want to enter today as we worship him and praise him. And this past week, I've been studying again the book of Esther, which is one of my favorite books in the entire Bible, actually. And it actually is such a short book, but it doesn't even mention the name of God. Yet you see his fingerprints, the providence of God, the provision of God, how he works in unfathomable ways, unsearchable ways. Esther, I'd encourage you to read the book. But it speaks about salvation for the Jews. It speaks about using a young maiden. It, um, she didn't even understand the full message or the full implication of what God was doing in her life. But God had his hand upon her. And we often use this scripture and we say quite lightly that perhaps we were born for such a time as this. Familiar favorite scriptures that people quote, but it's from the book of Esther. This young maiden was an orphan. In fact, she lost her mother and her father. Imagine the tears, the tragedy, what she was going through, but she didn't know at that time that God had a plan for her life, that she would be placed in a position as queen, and she would be instrumental in saving the whole Jewish race at, at that time. And sometimes in our lives, God allows things that we don't understand always. Disappointments, frustrations, trials. But God has his hand upon us. He said he'll never leave us. He will never forsake us. He promised to make a way where there is no way. So this evening, as we prepare our hearts in worship, Andy, can I have a little bit more power here? Sorry. As we prepare our hearts in worship, I know that God has a place, a word on, our, on Pastor Chris's heart to share with us this evening. But we need to be in unity, in agreement, to decide that God will speak to us tonight. It's up to us, actually, because God continually speaks. He was speaking. He was ready to speak to Moses from that burning bush. But the scripture says it was only when Moses said, let me turn aside. Let me look. Let me wait. Let me see. And God had his attention. And every time we gather together, that's what happens. God is seeking out. His eyes go to and fro across the earth, still seeking out that loyal heart, still seeking out the person that's placed their hand to the plow and is determined not to look back, deciding again tonight to follow Jesus, trusting in him, trusting him. When everything around you is falling apart, still trust in him. And we're going to lift up a... A song that says, you are still God. When all foundations have been shaken, when I'm left standing in the dark, and all I feel is my heart breaking, you still reign and you're still God. And when it feels our hope has faded, the heavy questions hit so hard, and though my soul may feel forsaken, you still reign and you're still God. Though I can't see what's before me, I know that I can trust your heart. And this one truth will be my story. You still reign and you're still God. So let's just open our hearts in worship tonight. Don't look to the left nor to the right. Let's just praise him this evening. Still. 
strengthen your heart. Wait, I say on the Lord. We have so much to rejoice about, that we have a good, good Father, a heavenly Father. So we want to just give him praise tonight. What a beautiful name. What a wonderful name. Let's take our seats. We're going to have our time of offering. 
And as you know that the basket is placed at the front. For those of you that are live streaming, then the details, well, they should come up on the, on the um, screen. But tonight we've got some technical issues. But you know, this is a time of offering. It's a joyful time. We can only give God because he is first given to us. So God bless you as you give. that death could not hold you, that the grave is empty, that the veil was rent from top to bottom, that you truly made a way where there was no way. We are forever grateful that you saw and found that that was lost, that you left the 99 and came after the one, Lord. And we, Father God, we just thank you tonight that your word will be ministered, that we worship you in spirit and in truth that we forget what lies behind, but we lift up our eyes and we continue on this highway of holiness. We thank you that you are a faithful friend, that you, are, you stick closer than a brother, that you are our master, our king. Lord, that there is nothing impossible with you. Once again, we bring you the prayer request, Lord. We bring that young Sophia. Lord, almighty God, she's the other side of the world in Australia. But we pray for her tonight as a congregation, as an assembly of believers, as the family of God. With simple faith, God, we stand upon your promise that by your stripes she is healed, Lord. That you dealt with sickness the same way you dealt with sin over 2,000 years ago upon the cross of Calvary. That you are still the Lamb of God in the center of heaven and your blood still flows and your blood still heals your blood still delivers i lift sophia up to you god father almighty god there is nothing that is impossible with you not that you do not know so many prayers have been lifted up for this young child but we unite tonight we await a good report lord touch her as we pray for her as those who lifted up the paralytic God, as the woman who pressed through the crowd and touched the hem of your garment, and you felt virtue leave heaven. Tonight, as we lift Sophia up to you, God, I pray that you feel virtue, virtue and strength and power and anointing leave heaven. 
and let that demon of cancer bow at the name of the name of Jesus, the name above all names. Lord, she's nine years old. I pray, Almighty God, that you reverse this sickness, that you nullify it, that you heal her from the crown of her head to the soles of her feet. I pray for her mother and her father and her loved ones. I pray for strength amongst them, Lord. Unite them in prayer. Send prayer warriors, Lord. Oh, hallelujah. And for all our needs, God, as a church, I thank you that you are truly Yahweh Jireh, that you have provided more than we can ever think or imagine. Bind us together now as the word will be ministered. We thank you for our congregation, for those that are at home. May you bless them and unite them in the spirit also. In Jesus' precious name we pray. We pray for the offering also. Let's give the Lord a clap offering as Pastor Chris comes to share the word of God this evening. God bless you. Hi, evening all. It's, uh, it's a pleasure to be here to share with you tonight. So give thanks for tonight, which is actually uh, the Eastern Orthodox Easter today. So they're celebrating or uh, honoring a Good Friday. It's a celebration for what's to come, uh, Resurrection Sunday. So um, we have that in mind as we're here worshipping God, reflecting upon his word. I want to just give thanks for our Archbishop. I want to give thanks for his life, for the blessing that he is to each one of us, to this church, for the messages that we receive week in and week out. And I'm so conscious of how much I have received, and I'm never more conscious that when I'm asked to share a word, because then I, I see what's been deposited in me. I see all these words that have been going out week after week, year after year, and I realize that a palette of colors has been given to me. The tools have been laid out for me. And all I have to do is just seek God and let him paint that picture that he wants to paint. So I want to give God thanks for Archbishop's life because it's a labor of love for so many years preaching the message of truth to us. So may God bless him and refresh him. And I want to thank God as well for our senior pastor and, and for her encouragement and for the worship team because it's the worship that brings us into that presence of the living God. You know, we can have all the words that we want, but if we don't have that heart, that connection in worship with God, then words can just be dry. But it's the spirit that brings life to the word. And it's the spirit that brings life to the word when we come in worship before God. So it's such a fundamental part of our time of communion with him when we come together as a church. So I've got a, a, a message I'd like to share with you. Um, you know, things that I was reflecting when I was asked to share, and I was just writing it out. And, you know, something I seek God for, I say, Lord, however you give me a message, that's how I want, it, I want to minister it. In the, in the same spirit in which you speak it into my heart when I'm reflecting upon your word, when I'm thinking about you, it's in that same spirit I want to share it. There's often a part of me that might want me to share it in this way or share it in that way. But God says, just share what I've given you in my way. You know, and I'm reminded that when I was, when I was, a, when I was a child, you may have had the same experience. And when you, you start swimming or you're taken to swim to a pool or wherever, and when you start, before you start swimming, you're holding on to the side. And, and you're kind of a little bit nervous to let go. And that's your safety net almost. But you don't really get into the full, you don't really enjoy the fullness of what a swim is all about until you let go. But there's that element, isn't there, that element of trust. And it's the same with God, you know. It's like God will sometimes share something, I have something on my heart. And I'll put it on paper. And putting it on paper for me is like holding on to the side, you know. But God says sometimes, just let go. So I might be holding on for a little while tonight, okay? But, you know, 
please God, you know, we can swim together in the spirit of God and that God will speak to us through, through what he shared with me. So the title of this message is the, the Fallenness and the Redemption of Man, which is very significant at this time. And I was reflecting from the beginning, just looking at us as mankind and what the message is, what the Bible teaches us and, 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 and speaks out to us. And from Adam and Eve, where we were made from the dust of the earth, okay, so the very same elements, think about it, the very same elements that we walk on every day is from that very same dust that we, we walk on that God created, the universe created us. He created the universe around us, the distant stars, the planets, animals, creatures, birds and sea life, trees and plants, and everything we see around us is as a result of God's creation. And he starts with vast spaces and distances, with inanimate materials, pure physical elements, with gases and rocks and voids and metals, things that feel hostile and alien to us, but God brought them into being, and today scientists of all shades study and they investigate them. But from the great and rugged and lifeless forms, moved on, God moved on to much smaller organisms. And you can read all of this in the book of Genesis. Just look at the pattern of what God did. He moves on to smaller organisms from these lifeless things that we see around us. And he brings to life creatures of all colors, of all types, that can, start, that can hear noises, that can see that can touch, that can taste, that can smell and that can move around. So from the physical, from the inanimate, he moves to things that move and can actually have sense. And today with our busy lives, our technological lives, we miss so much of what he has created. We take it for granted. In fact, I think sometimes we completely ignore or forget the fact that God is truly behind these things. He made them so they can glorify him. If I said to you, I can take you somewhere, I'm going to take you, and I was really enthusiastic about it, and I said to you, I'm going to take you somewhere, you're not going to believe this, but I'm going to take you somewhere, God actually made this thing, you're going to see it, that God himself, God created it. You, you might get excited by that thought and say, really? Yeah, Take me, take me to that place. I want to see, I want to see what God's created. And I'll take you to the zoo. And I'll point you to the heavens. But these things are there. And God created them. And the scripture says God created them. They are around us. This is the beauty that God created to glorify him. But God wasn't satisfied with what all that he made. He wanted to place on earth something that would represent himself separate from him but so much like him like animals these beings would could touch and taste and smell and share all the senses that animals have but one amazing thing that would separate us from everything else that God had created and it could not be found on this earth and that is God chose to put his very own spirit within man and by making us like himself, we now had the ability to choose, to make decisions, and to feel with our hearts and our souls. And without becoming sentimental, there was only one feeling he desired we would feel in our souls, and that is love. Love for his creation, love for one another, and love for him. It's in the soul that we love. The Bible says that God is love, and it is God who lived in the center of man's heart. God had ordained us not just to see each other, or hear, or smell each other as dogs do, but as gods to have fellowship with one another, to love one another, to be in relationship with one another, and most importantly, to have fellowship with him. Shakespeare once said, fellowship is life. 
And if COVID has taught people anything, it's that isolation and separation are inhuman experiences. Our sense of meaning and value and purpose is lost when we're separated from each other. Loneliness, individualism, selfishness are the antithesis of all that God intended. Paradise was the place where we wanted for nothing but only to give and to share and to create and to love and be loved. But on that fateful day that we call the great fall, everything changed. Adam and Eve disobeyed God through taking from the forbidden fruit. And whether that fruit was a literal fruit or as, as if some have taught it's a metaphorical, a symbolic fruit, one thing we do know is that everything changed. Man, mankind was corrupted and weakened. That's what happened that day. The creation of God that he made first from the dust and brought together all these elements and then breathed his spirit into this inanimate being that he made came, came to life. And, and as a result of our fall, everything started changing. From having control of our own senses, we lost control. We looked where we shouldn't and we wanted what we shouldn't want. In fact, from being so satisfied and fulfilled, we became empty like the void that God originally spoke in, into. That same void is what man has today. A void that cannot be filled with anything of this world because only God is great enough, high enough, deep enough, wide enough to fill that great void. From looking outward, we began to look inward. The mold had been turned inside out. And I was reminded when I used to do plaster Paris as a child, you used to have the mold and you had the plaster and you poured it into the mold. And when you took the mold off, the image you had looked, looked lovely. You were so impressed with it and then you started painting it. And if you think of that mold, but you turn that mold inside out, it looks unshapely. It looks disfigured. And that's what happened with us. We were turned inside out. Selfishness became the dominant characteristic of man. Always wanting and never being fulfilled. And always wanting to preserve ourselves at the expense of others. And last night there was a documentary and it was about the, um, the bombings that took place, 7-7, uh, I believe it was called, when you may remember there was a bomb on a train, there was a bomb on a bus, and it was, it was terrible, and sadly a lot of people got killed. Um, and they were speaking to people that had been affected or were on one of the buses or the trains. And this particular guy, he was on a train, he was in a tunnel, and um, the bomb had exploded uh, just at the end of the carriage. And obviously, was, they were thrown all over the floor. He was totally shaken. And uh, he thought he was going to die. And there was a woman next to him. And she reached out her hand. And she said, hold my hand, she said. She said, don't worry. She said, it's going to be all right. She said, it's going to be OK. And he said, I didn't know whether I was going to live or die. He said, but that hand that was extended to me, it gave me so much courage, so much hope. He goes, actually touching her hand made me feel like it was going to be okay. And a bomb had gone off. And then a few moments later, the guard said, you know, gradually tr try and make yourself, make your way out of the, out of the carriage and you'll need to start walking down the tracks through the tunnel. And he said that what he did was he jumped up, he shoved her out the way, and he made his way out. And that was the last he ever saw of that woman. And he was on TV last night, and he was in tears. He said he spent his, the last however many years it's been feeling so guilty that he did that. He said this woman extended her hand to me and it, it just, it gave me so much encouragement. And he said that, and all I could do was push her out of the way because all I thought about was myself. And he felt so bad. And the program was about trying to find this lady so that he could speak to her. And it wasn't definite at the end that he found her. 
There was a few people on there that they managed to get together, but it wasn't clear. Um, but he said that even that, it gave him some sense of, 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 of closure and, and reprieve. And I really felt sorry for that man. But I, under, I understood it. I thought that is the selfish instinct that our human nature has. You know, that after all is said and done, you know, what's inside us? Is it ourselves that we prefer over and above anybody else? The me before you mentality. And it's that song that we sing, you know, that lovely song actually. It's, it's all about you, all about you, Jesus. And I thought, is it, is it all about him? Is it all about others? Or is it really all about me? And it's a question that, you know, I have to ask myself. Is it about him or is it about me? And as Archbishop often says, the ugly trinity, me, myself, and I. The Greek word for I, for those that you don't know, is ego. And that is the actual word for ego, ego, I. And what is so pervasive in today's social media world is the need for everyone to be known, to be noticed, and to be liked. People live their lives and build their self-esteem and their reputation on how many likes they get. And when people make negative comments on their feeds, some people can't sleep. They can't get over it. You know, sadly, some even take their own lives because of what is said and what is, is spoken. And what is also very interesting is some people even feel worse when there are no comments at all made. That can make people even feel worse than having a negative comment, to be ignored. And it reminded me of the uh, object lesson that Archbishop does with the, with the rice, where you have three, three types of rice that have been spoken to. One, I love you, one, I hate you, and one is ignored. And the one that's ignored, that color of that water is even dirtier than the one that, said that, they, that is spoken to, I hate you. We don't need the approval of men, but the approval and the love of God. It's only his love that lifts us and upholds us. St. Paul says, I do not seek to please men, for if I still please men, I would not be a bondservant of Christ. So we as humanity, we wandered off and we became something else, something different from what God had intended for us. From having a heart that could feel only the love and joy of heaven we inherited a heart that could feel guilt and shame and embarrassment and fear and anxiety and hopelessness, foreign emotions that were never intended to cloud our lives. From communing with God, we turned to ourselves and our comforts became the material things we ruled over. The food we eat, the clothes we wear, the places we go, the people we know, all these things, God-given and commendable, but when we are turned inside out, they become our rulers. The things we need to get us through this life. All of the great problems in is clear for all to see. We see greed and corruption in governments throughout this world when famine is rife and those appointed to care, care only for themselves. We see our seas polluted, our forests burned and our creatures becoming extinct every day. And as Marvin Gaye once said in his beautiful song, what's going on? God asked us to look after his garden and we are destroying it and each other. In Isaiah 53, 6, the prophet says, All we like sheep have gone astray. We have turned everyone to his own way. And this is not a message of doom, but of truth. It's the same truth that prophets of old discerned and preached, that man is lost and broken and hardened and in need of a saviour. The good news of Easter is that God has not forgotten us, but he ordained his own son to come into this world from the heavenly dimensions and show us the way. He said, I am the way, the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. He said, deny yourself, take up your cross, and follow me. The I has to go, 
Our egos are the barrier between us and God and between us and each other. Jesus is, as we say in the Nicene Creed, light from light, true God from true God. As the good shepherd, he has come to find us where we are and to lead us back to green pastures. He did not come into the world to condemn the world, but that the world might be saved through him. The Christian message is not one of condemnation, but one of salvation. God has entered this world to lift us and to transform us. For God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. John 3:17. Jesus gave us many parables and stories to try and convey to us the love that God has for us. We often read the Good Samaritan as Christ teaching us to be compassionate and caring. And of course, that's true. But the Good Samaritan, as our Archbishop has often taught us, is Jesus Christ himself. And we are the ones wounded on that Jericho road. We started walking away from Jerusalem, leaving the city of God, the Garden of Eden. And there, the enemy leapt on us. We were left deprived of our coat of divinity, left on our journey with the wounds and pains of this life. But God stooped on that Jericho road, stopped on that Jericho road. He stooped down from heaven and lifted us up by his right hand, Jesus Christ. He did not judge us. He did not criticize us, condemn us. But he poured in the oil and the wine. The precious blood to cleanse and forgive us of all our wrongdoings and the Spirit of God poured back into our hearts and souls to revive us once again and to declare to us that once again we should love one another as I have loved you. In the parable of the prodigal son, it speaks again of a son wanting his inheritance, wanting to do the things his way and leaving his father, he goes away and squanders everything. Just like us, princes in the paradise of Eden, he became a beggar in a pigsty. But when he came to his right mind, when he repented, when he turned his mind, he made his way home. And as soon as his father saw him afar off, his father ran to him. Jesus is telling us all, telling us all, Jesus is telling all mankind, the father is running to you. He loves you so much, he wants you back home to enjoy the fellowship, to enjoy the feast, and enjoy the party. The father asked for the best robe, the first robe, and that's our divine status, restored, and the Father rejoices. Another picture that Jesus gave to us that I want to finish on is that of the lost sheep. And our Archbishop has shared this several times lately, and actually senior pastor just finished on that as I was about to start this message. And it's from chapter Luke 15. So he spoke this parable to them saying, What man of you... Having a hundred sheep, if he loses one of them, does not leave the 99 in the wilderness and go after the one which is lost until he finds it. And when he has found it, he lays it on his shoulders, rejoicing. And when he comes home, he calls together his friends and neighbors, saying to them, Rejoice with me, for I have found my sheep which was lost. I say to you that likewise there is more joy in heaven over one sinner who repents than over 99 just persons who need no repentance. What a picture of heaven. What a picture of the heart of God that, that Jesus is showing us. That God rejoices that when one soul is saved, that we are his sheep, that we were lost and going astray and he found, and he found us. And he uses neighbors and friends and people around to say, look, this is how much God rejoices when someone is lifted up and transformed once again into what they were called to be. And that's what God has done for each one of us here. At some point in our lives, a word was spoken. Our faith came alive. We put our trust in Jesus. The blood of Christ cleansed us and washed us and made us new creatures. God done something amazing. That's why we're seated here tonight. And that's just the beginning of the work. 
And now God is restoring us and transforming us into the image and likeness of his son, Jesus Christ, who is God from God. And as we've been taught so many times, if he is God from God and we are being restored into his image and likeness, we are taken back to be the gods that God made us to be. But we have to submit to him. We have to yield to him. We have to give to him our hearts. We have to deny self and seek only him above all things. There is no other way. Psalm 95 says, Oh, come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us shout joyfully to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving. Let us shout joyfully to him with psalms. For the Lord is the great God. And the great king above all gods, in his hands are the deep places of the earth. The heights of the hills are his also. The sea is his, for he made it, and his hands formed the dry land. O oh, come, let us worship and bow down. Let us kneel before the Lord, our maker, for he is our God, and we are the people of his pasture and the sheep of his hand. He is truly the good shepherd. And we are the sheep of his hand. We are the sheepfold in this place. We have a good shepherd in our archbishop. And we have the chief, she chief shepherd in our Lord Jesus Christ. We have everything we have need of and more to fulfill his mission and to allow him to fulfill his mission in our hearts and in our lives. We need to submit to him, church. We need to come to him. We need to seek him out. We need to be more fervent. And I speak to myself first, and I say that in truth. I really do say that in truth. Because it's all a waste of time. It's a waste of time. Seriously. It's a waste of a life. I'm telling you. If we just come to church, if we just know what to say, if we just have our meetings and our programs and our things, but we forget the love of God, we're not close to him, we don't love him really, we don't give anything up for him, we don't really want to serve him, we don't really want to sacrifice anything, we don't really want to talk to him, what is the point? And I say that to myself, I say Chris, what is the point? Either take it seriously or forget it. I have to challenge myself. St. Paul, as he says, examine yourselves. Examine yourselves. Is Christ in you? Is he over you? Is he the first, the number one? What's the greatest commandment? Love the Lord thy God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, with all your strength. Can I put my hand on my heart? And I say, I love God in that way. That's between me and God. <laughs> but it's for each one of us to ask that question. Do we love God with all our being? Do we truly? You know, that's what we aim for. No, we're not perfect. We have our faults. We have our weaknesses. But that doesn't take away from the fact that we've got something great to aspire to. And we have a helper in the Holy Spirit to help us become all that he wants us to become. God has enabled us, he's enabling us. We have to press in. We have to press in to seek out God. In Philippians, I'll finish with this and just share a little bit on this. Chapter 2, verse 5 to 11, such a beautiful scripture. He says, let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. Let this mind, this mind think. What kind of mind should I have? What kind of mind... What, how should I think in my everyday life? What should my attitude be in the way I conduct myself every day? Well, St. Paul gives it to us in this way. Have this mind which was in Christ Jesus, who being in the form of God, did not consider it real robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation, not sought out his reputation, he made himself of no reputation. But taking the form of a bond servant and coming in the likeness of men, like me and you and everybody else, we can't even imagine how great God is, how great that King of glory is. We can't even imagine. 
And yet, he brushed shoulders with men like us. He sat with them, the King of glory, the God of all creation. The word went through him, and all things were made that were made. And yet, he sat and had breakfast with them. And yet, he washed their feet. And yet, he just taught them and befriended them and loved them and broke bread with them and was among them as a servant. That is our God. What a wonderful God we serve. What a wonderful God we serve. He stooped down. He came to be like one of us, to love us, to help us, to care for us, to give us a chance. We were his enemies, lost and broken, defiled. That's what the scripture teaches us. But he came to raise us up. He came to wash us. He came to put that robe on us. He says, and being found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even the death of the cross. He humbled himself and became obedient. All this goes back, all these points go back to the first verse. Let this mind be in you, which was in Christ Jesus. Then he expands on it. So this is the mind that wants no reputation. This is the mind that is willing to serve. This is the mind that is willing to be obedient and live sacrificially. And he says, therefore, God also has highly exalted him and given him the name which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow, of those in heaven and of those on earth and of those under the earth, and that every tongue should confess that Jesus is Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. And that's a powerful verse where it finishes off because it says, Therefore, God also has highly exalted him and given him the name. You see, the name was given him by the Father, the name. And he says the name is Jesus. And we know that that name in Hebrew is Yeshua. And the meaning of the name is Savior. It's nothing to give someone a name. We give our children names. Give people names. But this, I don't believe, is what he's saying here. He was given the name in that he was the name. He was entitled to hold that title of Savior because he laid down his life for us to save us. He was obedient to the point of death. Every point of the law he fulfilled. He laid himself down as a perfect sacrifice for us. And for that reason, he was given the name above every other name, the Savior of the world. I just want to give thanks. I give thanks for, for his mercy and his grace over our lives. God bless you. I hope he's spoken to you. And um, until we meet again. <laughs> Praise God. Really inspiring word. I know that that's um, moved me. And I, I know that it has you also. And it's amazing how God speaks and that his ways are so perfect. And his thoughts are not our thoughts, his ways are not our ways. And as um, Pastor Chris was minister, I could really feel my heart being stirred. And I was singing the song just before he mentioned it. I will love the Lord my God with all my heart, with all my soul, with all my spirit. So let's stand together. God always confirms his word. Two or three witnesses. He always confirms that it's his word that is ministered from the pulpit. When you truly give yourself over to the Lord to use you, he will use you. And as he said, let's really decide in our hearts tonight to love the Lord with all our hearts, with all our mind, with all our spirit. It's the best decision we will ever make. I want to just um, invite... Dr. Leo to come also just to pray for us this evening. God bless you. It's lovely to have you with us. Let's give the Lord a clap of him for his life. It's Bishop elect. So we will just want to give him a, the microphone here. If you come and lift us up in prayer and then we'll finish with a, a praise song. God bless you. Glory to God. Hallelujah. 
Uh, the message from God through Pastor Chris was awesome. Amen. The Bible talks about blowing cold or warm. Amen? You can't just blow cold. Today, tomorrow, you blow warm. Next week, you blow cold. Next month, you're blowing warm. Make up your mind for Jesus. The Bible talks about the blessings of service to God. Amen. If you look at the Bible from Genesis to Revelation, you find out that the men of the ancients, praise God, the men of the ancients, I'm talking about the patriarchs, they served God from the bottom of their heart. And guess what? God rewarded them. In other words, God blessed them. So there is a blessing when we serve God. There is a blessing when we remain faithful to God. I wouldn't, I'm not preaching, I'm just trying to pray, but using the word of God. The apostles, Peter in particular, once asked Jesus, do you know what, Jesus? We have forsaken all to follow you. Peter asked Jesus this question. We forsook all. Do you know what Jesus told Peter? Jesus said to Peter, you know what? Whosoever has forsaken father, mother, brother, land, houses for my sake or for my name's sake, not only will I bless you in heaven, eternity, but I will also bless you on earth. Make up your mind as children and people of God to serve God. Lift up your hands to Jesus and begin to speak to God. Tell the Lord tonight the word has come with power, fire, precision. Tell the Lord, touch me with your word. Let this word be a fruit in my life. Let this word turn my life around. Touch me, O oh Lord. Lord, touch your people. Let this word that was spoken today through your servant, let it bring a total turn around to the church. Let it empower your people to serve you in truth and in spirit. Father, we thank you and we return all the glory to you. Amen. In Jesus' name. Amen. Can I hear a good amen? amen? Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you. Thank you. I will love the Lord my God with all my heart and all my soul and all my strength and all my might for he alone is God I will love the Lord my God with all my heart and all my soul and all my strength and all my might for he alone again I will love I will love the Lord my God with all my heart and all my soul and all my strength and all my might for He alone. Again, I will love, I will love the Lord my God with all my heart and all my soul and all my strength and all my might for He is God. Hallelujah. Just going to conclude with these, these things I have spoken to you, that my joy may remain in you and that your joy may be full. This is my commandment. So as we go our separate way tonight, until we meet again on Sunday, this is my commandment, that you love one another as I have loved you. Greater love has no one than this, than to lay down one's life for his friends. Let's give the Lord a mighty clap offering as we share the grace. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with each one of us now and forevermore. And surely goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives, and we will dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever and ever. Let's give him a mighty clap offering. God bless you until we see you on Sunday.